Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Nick, looking at a shooter on the ZX Spectrum 48K. This one is called Master Blaster. That's a really cool name, so hopefully it's a cool game. Uh, published by Crash in 1990. Now Crash are a UK magazine, or were, and this come as a part of a cover tape. So here we go. Now, as I say, it is an 8-bit shooter from 1990. If I don't do very well, I have got a cheat for um, immunity, and that could be the case. Nice font there, nice scrolling. Here we go. Uh, seems like we're controlling the Starship Enterprise. You can fire, obviously, for a shooter, but if you hold the fire button down, it launches like a, a grenade, which you can see how many I've got left on the top left there, uh, which will bl obliterate everything on the screen. Right, so, oh dear, that was a bit uncruel. So you have to learn about the waves of enemies here. When you get a new life, there's a, sh a shield for a short space of time. There we go, and there is a super grenade. So we're not playing with too much of the screen, it is quite narrow, what we need to go around with some power-ups as those stars. But graphically it looks brilliant, it sounds quite good as well, as a cover tape this, you would have been quite pleased with this one. But I think it's going to get a bit difficult, so let's just see, excuse me, let's just see if we can get off level one. Right, I've got one grenade left. Shield is off. I don't think there's a way of turning that on, to be honest with you. Not yet, anyway. Now, we need to go through this false fieldy thing. The graphics on this are absolutely brilliant. As a cover tape, I would have been over the moon with this. Good stuff. Now, you might not come across this as it was a cover tape, because I'm not sure it was commercially available. If you do know, let me know about that one. Oh, man. Now, you do have to learn the waves of aliens. And is the end of level POS already. Looks a bit like, um that thing from a Klingon bird of prey and I'm dead. Congratulations, you're dead. NNN -N -N is my moniker. So we'll have another go without the cheat on, see if I can do any better, see what I've learned. If not, then we'll put the, uh, the poke on for immunity, just so we can see what the level uh, design is like. Is it worth progressing on it? Now you see the star field um, at the back there, which is always quite clever, moving at a different speed uh, than the foreground. Occasionally those stars will go out and on again. I don't know if that was supposed to happen or whether it's just um, some random programming glitch, but it does look good however they're supposed to do it. And I'm not doing very well here again. Jibber jabbering at the same time I'm trying to talk. Bloom. I just crashed into the side. One life left. Cheat mode imminent. Right, I'm not sure what those stars are doing. Now you see some upgrades on the left there in those blue squares. One of them is flashing. Oh, we've gone on to two. What does that mean? Not sure what that means. Maybe it's rapid fire or something, but it's game over again. Right, time to put in a poke. 1990, so quite near the end of the ZX Spectrum's run. Maybe that's why it was free on a cover tape. Yellow and green, cyan and magenta, those split fonts there. Good stuff. Um, written by Cyberdyne, I think that was, and then published in the Crash magazine. Not sure how many levels this has got. If you've completed the game back in the day, let me know. Uh, don't know if it came out on any other 8-bit system either, so it might have been a Spectrum um, exclusive. Not 100% sure again. But so far, I'd say the gameplay is good, although it's a little bit tough. Although a lot of shooters were tough back in the day. Uh, scrolls really well. Graphics are great. Plenty of colour there. It's by no means monochrome. And it's quite exciting. So as a kid, I think I would have loved this game. Requires a bit of skill, as I say, learning the attack waves. Look, there's a ship there, making things a bit smaller. But it's definitely the Starship Enterprise, isn't it? So, influenced by Star Trek, without being called Star Trek. Ahead, Warp Factor 5. Uh, man the torpedo bays, Commander Data. Right. Good, right. Now, we got to the end of level boss on the first go. As you can see, I'm not dying this time, despite all my mistakes. So we'll see what happens when you defeat the end of boss. But that end of level boss look did look quite good as well. So good end of level bosses, good colour, good movement, good design. Love it. Master Blaster. Right, it, you can avoid the enemies rather than shooting them once you learn where they're going. Man, they are quite deadly. Right, here we go. So here's this bird of prey thing, looking like something from the Klingon Empire. Oh man, this game would have been really, really tough. Really tough, I think, for a kid to complete. 
Mm, I think we should beam a crew over there to take control of their command bridge. That's probably a better way forward than this. Shoot it in the eyeball. Not sure how many shots this thing is going to take. No energy meter on screen to let us know. Is there going to be a massive explosion when it goes? Hmm. I would have liked it in green to represent the bird of prey more from the Klingon Empire, but it's not really supposed to be that from the Klingon Empire. Although it's heavily influenced by Star Trek all round, it would seem. I wonder if this was meant to be a Star Trek game first of all. And got abandoned because of no license. Right, kaboom, two stars. Oh, it looks like um, the stage is just linked together, so that's quite clever as well. Hang on a minute. Oh, this... Do you remember when I reviewed Airwolf, if you've seen that? There was a bit like that there, but horizontally rather than vertically. Okay, all games influence other games, so we need to smash our way through that so we're not destroyed. That's enough, so free wise probably enough. And I guess this will be the end of the stage after that, unless it does flow in to each other, like Silkworm 4 or Swiv, or however you call it. Uh, right, boom, right, that's through there, good. How long is this going to go on for? A while. This is the sound of blocks exploding in space. Not um, some pickaxe landing on mud. There's another one there. Right, so two's probably enough. You don't need a bunch of three. I think there's going to be something like this at the end of each stage, gradually getting more trickier. So there might be stuff shooting at me as well when I'm going through this next time round. Need to whiz across there. Perfecto. Perfecto. Good, so it's broken up into three bits each sector, isn't it, really? The, the main shooting, then the end of the level boss, then that end game. We're warping to the next stage. Stage two. Sector two. I think we'll just do sector two. See if the gameplay goes any different. See the end of level boss, then we'll call it a day there. Interesting waves of attack these aliens have. Uh, they are various, they're not all exactly the same. Good shading, good graphics on the aliens coming at you. They're not just single blocks of aliens. I can't say anything bad about this one, really. I mean, quite often I go on about the difficulty level, but all Spectrum shooters are a bit like that to a degree, so it fits in well. And it has to be said, although it is a cover tape, this is one of the better ones I've played. Even prefer it to um, Flying Shark. Good. Sometimes I call that Flying Fox in error because uh, keep tropical fish and flying fox is a type of fish but it was flying shark I think that shooter he was, he was flying a biplane but this is the Sasha Enterprise and it works really well as a space shooter imagine the Xenon 2 music on this from uh, Commodore Amiga etc that would be absolutely epic wouldn't it but um, there isn't that you have to imagine that or the Star Trek music Look at that, animated scenery too. This is a brilliant game. I wasn't expecting this at all. It's a good name as well, Master Blaster. What's your job? I'm a Master Blaster. Oh, I better stay away from you then. Look, it's like, um, that's, oh, it's a big millipede, isn't it? An insect in space, insectoid. Really clever, really clever. Right, get through here again. Good. I mean, I don't know how long this game took to code, but there's a lot of attention to detail all over the place. It's just oozing quality, this game. Fonts, the movement, the gameplay, the surround, the, the star um, field at the back, the end level bosses. There's just all a whole heap of positives we can say from this. Was you lucky enough to buy that Crash magazine that had this on? If you did, then well done you. That was probably your best buy of the year. Right, okay, so that's... Whoops. So, the sectors, as I say, broke up into three bits. The first bit is this fighting bit through here. It looks like it's going to give me the end level boss now, is it? Is it going to be the same as before, or is it going to be a different end level boss? I'm soon going to find out. There we go. Oh, amazing! That's nothing like Star Trek. Oh, look, that's great. So, a central skull with four other things flying around it. I presume we have to shoot those as well. In Cyan. Kaboom! You're, you're done for, sir. I bet this is something to do with the Klingon Empire or something again. Or maybe those sneaky Romulans or the Borg. We are the Borg. Resistance is futile. It wouldn't have sounded good in my voice, actually. Bear it over. They would have put someone else on the mic. We are the Borg. Resistance is futile, mate. No, that wouldn't have worked. Right, come on, Skull. Blow up. Die. Right, I'm taking out two of his Sentinels. Two more to take out. Then presumably I could take him out. 
Obviously not on a date. Oh, he's gone. He didn't blow up. He just legged it. Brilliant. Two excellent end of level bosses. I'm tempted to keep playing and playing this, but you know we've pretty much seen all the gameplay, haven't we? So I'll just go through this um, this outer defence here. Let's knock our way through here. Yes, I was right, wasn't I? So it's this again, but there's stuff shooting at you this time round. Good stuff. Right, time that. I would have died then because I crashed into the scenery, but we won't worry about that. So well worth persevering with this one without the poke, I would say. Uh, much, much bigger sense of achievement when you do it without that poke. Doing it properly is always best. I've put a poke on really so I can show you a little bit for this uh, review so you can see what the sort of thing you would expect if you went through and tried to at least do it properly. I won't ruin it for you by completing the whole game. We've just seen two end of level bosses. We'll get to the end of here then. Fantastico. So track this one down. Probably downloadable for a number of places. Master Blaster. Is that it? It's going to enter like Sector 2 or is it going to do something else? Yeah, Sector 2. Secure. So that's Secure 2 Sector. So I hope you liked having a look at that one as we walk to Sector 3. Um, as I said, that was Master Blaster on the ZX Spectrum, published by Crash in 1990 as one of their cover tapes. Got any comments about this game, similar games, cover tapes or anything retro, then please put that below. You're always more than welcome and it does bring a bit of activity to the channel. Um, a huge thank you to everyone that subscribed so far, and particularly those people that take time to comment about their memories, because that's what it's all about. Much appreciate there again. If you want to help a bit more, there's patreon.com slash njenkin. Every bit does help. Have a look at that site if you do get a bit of time. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.